Hey guys, welcome back. So on that other video, I showed a little bit about replacing these rear stingers, stinger wear plates. This one I figured I would do more of a dedicated video just showing how this whole process goes. So Factory Cat, they put these two individual plates and they're approximately three eighths of an inch thick. And they have three plug welds. These ones don't appear to have the plug welds. So if anybody knows why Cat uses three eighths, why it's so thin, um, I'd like to know. Anyways, so the majority of my customers don't like that. It wears out, it cracks, and they fail relatively quickly, considering the amount of time it takes to gouge this off and weld new ones on. It doesn't really make sense. And Cat sells these plates, they're about $500 each if you buy them through Cat. So that's kind of expensive. So, like on the other video, I had a piece of three quarter inch AR400 bent to match that profile and it's one piece all the way across. I, I put these on a couple of machines over two years ago and they're still going. These plates will last like maybe eight months if you're lucky. And the ones that have been on the machine for like two years are just now like starting to show signs of wear. I guess it really depends on the operator and how hard you are on it, but I just don't understand why they're so thin. Anyways, so we're gonna use the air arc. We're gonna gouge these plates off. Hopefully there's no surprises underneath there, which there are sometimes. And then we're gonna fit that new plate, make sure it, everything fits correctly. And then we're gonna weld it out with dual shield.
All right, we got the plates gouged off. And you can see that we've still got a decent amount of weld on there. So instead of grinding all that off, what I will do is just come back through and just kind of wash it with the air arc and just try to get that down as flat as possible. So that way you don't have to uh, do hardly any grinding because I don't like grinding. Grinding is for the apprentice, not, not for me. I don't do that no more. So we'll wash this down, scrape some of the grease off, grind it, and then we'll test fit that.
Okay, so we've got this all prepped, pretty much ready to go. We've got our new plate here. So when they when they bent this, it's called step breaking, where they they bend it and push a little bit, you know, every inch or so to make it um, have that contour. I suppose you could roll this, but um, the company that I used, they chose to step break it to match the template that I gave them. So in doing so, they had to leave this much extra so that it could hit their bottom die. And you can see that's where the top die pushes on it. And then a the bottom die, you could just barely make out a line right there. So it had to be that much longer on each side. So I have to cut that off to get the correct size that I need. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here is cutting, cutting that off, the, the extra pieces off on there. Well, that's definitely not my best plasma cut. I didn't realize it, but the machine got turned down to 60 amps. So I was cutting three quarter on 60 amps. So when I cut the other side, I'm gonna turn it up to 105 and then let's, uh, let's see how it cuts then. Cause it shouldn't, shouldn't do that, but that's not really gonna matter. It's gonna get it covered up with wild anyway so A little better. All right, so we've got it tacked on. See the top fits, good. Now the sides have a little bit of a gap. The template I made was on a different machine. So it's very possible that 
Um, this machine is a little bit more wore out or wore out a little differently than the one that I made a template on. So this got bent a little bit differently. And you can see the bottom, there's the gap there. So I, I played with this thing and this is the best that I can get it to fit. So I'm gonna take these strips and stick them in here. So that it looks like that. So I can weld up, put, you know, four or five passes on that. And that's gonna be pretty strong. Some of you are probably gonna not like the way that I do that, but for this particular application, I don't see an issue with that. And I think this is a better option than sitting here and just running beads after beads after beads. At least you have a one inch piece to tie into there. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna take a piece of half inch and I'm gonna lay it. You can see the gap. I'm gonna lay a piece of half inch, kind of like that. And then I'll just run two beads, one to a half inch to here and one and a half inch to here. And that will tie that in nice and strong right there. Again, I feel like that's a better choice than sitting there and running a whole bunch of beads. And I feel like doing it this way would be a lot stronger. But hey, top fits good. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna do.
personally, I think that's more than enough to hold it on there. So, I'm gonna take that to the other side. Put two or three passes there over the top and then get the bottom welded out. Not super perfect, but it works. You can see the half inch plate and the two welds on either side. I'm only gonna put one weld on each side because 
that was straight vertical and that weld was really, really digging in there, meaning it was getting a ton of penetration and a ton of wire went in that weld. So I feel like that is sufficient for this application. So we're gonna clean up the sharp corners. That way it's uh, a, trans a smoother transition if the other machine comes in at an angle, it doesn't kind of catch that corner. Smooth up the corners and then we'll give her a quick uh, coat of paint around the end and then we'll be done. All right, we got our corners all blended in. Throw some paint on the edges and we'll be good. Stupid can. You'd think how expensive these things are that they make make them spray better. Well, there you go, that's how to do a, one way you could do a stinger on a scraper. Pretty similar process for all the different sizes. So that's that. And before I end the video, I'll show you a little bit of what's going on here. So I started to make a video about pulling the ejector out and the apron and stuff before we started on this. The other day and my wisdom tooth was like really really hurting and my mouth was starting to lock up and then I ended up going to the dentist and getting it pulled well that was a very bad experience so we I just ended up pulling all this stuff out without making a video so sorry about that but take you over there in a minute show you what the apprentice has going on in there and uh, so this is the ejector that was in this machine and believe it or not they were running it like this for a while I don't know how long but you can see I mean this thing they got the original lifting tabs cut off we had to weld our own on there to get it out I mean, this thing is just full of surprises, you know? And we're like, okay, well maybe we can fix it. And then the more you look at it, like the more that is wrong with it. It's like, what in earth what happened here? Like, I, I just don't understand what happened here. And I know why they cut this, because that was hitting the fuel tank. I mean, every every part of this has is something that's messed up on it. You know, even those are all cracked up. So, 
customer bought three used ones and this one showed up today and then so we have this I'm not exactly sure what's going on here but it looks a lot better than that other one it's like they gouged something off left all of that and then welded a new sheet on I don't know and then they like heated this corner up for some reason and they like started to cut that side out and then stopped but all back here looks looks really good all down in there those are all original welds and they're not cracked which that's a pretty common spot for a crack there, there, and that's probably the most common spot on an ejector for for the welds to start cracking is right in here. So this needs a little bit of work and then it'll go back in there. Let's go check on the old apprentice, see what he's got going on over here. Looks like he's learning the art of finding the hidden plug weld on the side skins. It can be very frustrating, I will admit. So he got his whole floor done pretty much all by himself. I think the floor came out pretty good, especially since he has never done that before. So. He's got to finish getting that side skin off. And we're gonna do the same thing right here. Replace that, because that's probably the most common wear point in the can where the dirt comes up, wears that out. So, he looks pretty frustrated. Let's, uh, let's leave him alone. So that'll be it for this video. I know last week there wasn't a whole lot going on. I just posted that boring video about the pencil hitch or after I posted it, I realized it's called a Lynette. So sorry about the boring video last week, but I mean, sometimes you get just all, all little stuff like that all week and there's no you know, exploding fuel tanks and crazy things going on. Sometimes it's just a bunch of little simple things and you know, I'm okay with that. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, hit that subscribe button. A lot of you that are watching are not subscribed. Please hit that subscribe button and see you on the next one. Stay tuned.